Hi, and welcome to DIY with Jeannie. Uh, I'm Jeannie, and this is our channel where we do most things craft. And so uh, we do a lot of sewing, we do a lot of paper crafts, we do a lot of decorative crafts, and we try a lot of new things. And so today what I would like to show you is how to make your own homemade kitchen sponge. So a lot of us have these dish cloth scrubbers. They have this um, woven side that helps you scrub things off, but then it's just a dish cloth. And we're going to take that and turn it into our own sponge to scrub things with in our kitchen. And when they get dirty, you just throw them in the, in the washing machine and you wash them. And if you wash them in hot water, then it'll kill all the bacteria. You can also use bleach and that would work just as well because it doesn't really matter if it bleaches some of this color out. So this is our project for today and I want to show you how we can get eight out of a four pack of these dishcloth scrubbing pads that I got at Walmart. So these were about five, six dollars for four of them and they come in different colors. I chose this color because I thought it would go with so many things. And what I did was I cut one in half. So what we're going to do is now go in and square this up so that we don't have that curve on the corner. I can leave that edge on this one and we want to cut the curve off this corner. And now what we're going to do is fold it where the woven part is on the inside. We want to line up that side our clips on it. Now, even though this side is already sealed, um, we're going to eventually sew over it like this. So if you want to sew it, you can. I'm not going to because I don't want to sew it. So what I'm going to do is sew around the three open sides and I'm going to go sew up and across. I'm going to stop right there, start back at this one, sew and down the sides. And I want to double, I want to back stitch here just to make sure it's secure. And I'm also going to stitch up so that when I turn this, which we're going to turn it right side out and stuff it. So. This is, I'm going to go back and sew the, sew a straight line up and over, back stitch, back stitch, down and over. And then I'll come back and show you the next step. And we will eventually have two scrubbers out of one dishcloth. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we have it. We have sewn, and you can't really see, we've sewn from here back down. Now one thing, if I know I'm going to turn something and I want to tuck that in, what I do is I go ahead and sew from this seam out to the edge. And I do that to help me with that turn uh, when I close up that hole. So let's cut the corners. This helps keep bulk out of our corners so that when we flip them it's not too thick right there in the corner to be able to turn it. So let me move all this off to the side. I need to get me a little trash can over here. That's going to be my next thing. So now we're going to turn it right side out. And the way we do that is we start with the far corners. We turn them. And I just take it and push that leftover piece on in and then I'll grab these two corners and pull them through. Because doing the, the side closest to me is easier. Doing the side further away, it's less easy. There we go. Got our two corners out and see, it's pretty much got the nice corner out for us. This one needs a little bit of moving, but it's got still a nice corner. And now this top corner, I'll push it out Go. This side, push, 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 get that corner out, just like we did the bottom. 
and by, by sewing upwards, see how when I turn it, it just automatically wants to pop that inside. So it automatically wants that seam allowance to turn inwards. And that is really what we want. So there is our little square. Now we're going to take some fiber fill and we're going to just put some in here. We want, we don't want a giant amount. It's not like we're stuffing a stuffed animal. But we want enough in there that it is very sponge-like. It's got a little substance to it. Let's push them down into the corners. Now, you'll see I pull it apart as I do it. This stuff has memory and it knows where it came from, which is really weird to me. But um, it wants to clump back together the way it was and we don't want it to do that. So you pull it apart and it, it now has new friends. It's getting new memories. Okay, well, there we go. I've got that nice and filled. I'm gonna take and fold this in nicely. Let me put a little thingy on it. And we're going to go and sew all around it. Now when you do this, see how the netting is not attached to that cloth? You want to make sure that you get that inside so when you sew it, you're catching that netting with it. So don't let the net get away from you because it'll try. It will try. So now what we're going to do is go and sew around the entire thing so that it's got this kind of an edge on it. And it'll do it itself. It will show you exactly how to do it because it doesn't want to push that fiber too far out of the way. And so you're only going to be able to get your foot a certain amount. So don't freak out thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not getting it. I'm not catching enough or I'm catching too much. It won't let you catch too much. You just want enough that you've got that edge that you're able to scrub with, but you've also got a good, good grip on the sponge. Okay. So let me go sew this, and then I'll show you how we pleated that middle, and not pleated, tufted. And I will be right back to tuft. Okay, so here is our little square, and what we're going to do is tuft the center. And to do that, we've already got our thread. Line up the bottom. I am not going to tie a knot. And that is because I want a lot of string on this back side so that when I bring this back up, because I'm just going to do it once, bring it right back up and see how I've got this big tail on this side. I'm going to hold that, pull this up, and now I'm going to tie these two together. I know I've told y'all a million times, I use those clips so that I don't stab myself. And here I am using a needle and you're thinking, well, you didn't stab yourself. You did good, you did an amazing job. And on this one I did, but I'll show you the blood stain on the other one because I stabbed myself a bit. I only have to stab myself once, you know. Once I've bled on these projects, I'm good to go. So we're going to cut that off. Let's see, now we've got a nice little tufted. It's got a place for us to kind of hold. But I overfilled this one, and that's probably why I ended up cutting myself, or stabbing myself. But see, I've got blood. But so be it. It's what it is. They're mine. So there we go. Two different ones. This one has got a lot of filling. This one does not. But they'll both do the same thing. And they are both good for the kitchen. And I can get eight out of this four pack, which is phenomenal. So I could probably make four and keep two of the cloths, or even make the two and keep three of the cloths. And then I've got everything that I need for cleaning in my kitchen. So um, 
I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. This is a little different. It would go really well with our set that we made before. If we could just get colors that matches each of the sets that we make, that would be fabulous. And um, I'll be back next time with more, with another sewing project for you. And I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, hit that bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you next time when we will work on the scraps that we had left over from um, our mug rug. So we made, we put together our pieces and then we created a mug rug. So then we had this left over, so we will we'll come back to it and make something new out of it next time. So I hope you have a great week, and I will see you later.